Today we are going to discuss that pot odds matter in No Limit Texas Hold'em. A lot of you in the comment section down below, go down there, check it out, click the like and subscribe button. You tell me that you hate calling bets when you think you're probably going to lose the pot. And in fact, a lot of people, if they think they're going to lose the pot, they never call. They just fold. However, that is not a good strategy because it doesn't matter what happens on this individual instance. What matters is what happens in the long run. And essentially, the bet size that you are facing is going to impact your strategy a lot. Before we move forward and go through a bunch of examples, recognize that against small bets, you should be defending very frequently because you're risking relatively little money to try to win a lot. And against larger bets, you should be defending less often because you're risking a lot to try to win a little. Take a very simple scenario. Let's say everyone falls around to the button in a cash game and they raise to two big blinds, only two. If the small blind folds and you're in the big blind, you have to put in one big blind more to try to win the 4.5 big blind pot. You're getting very good pot odds. So you should be defending quite wide. What happens instead if the button raised to 15 big blinds? Well, now you have to put in 14 more, which is a lot. You're getting very, very bad pot odds. And because of that, you should fold almost everything. As you're facing larger bets, defend less often. And as you're facing smaller bets, you should be defending more. Recognize that the pot odds you are getting indicate how much equity you need to realize in order to continue in the pot. To calculate pot odds, what you do is you take the bet you are facing and divide it by the bet you're facing plus your call amount plus the current pot. That will tell you how much equity you need to realize. So if you're facing a 100% pot size bet, say your opponent pots it, in this scenario, you need to realize one pot size bet divided by that pot size bet plus your opponent's pot size bet plus the current pot, which is one divided by three, which equals 33% equity. But if you're facing a much smaller bet of let's say 25% pot, well now you need to realize 0.25 divided by 1.5, which is only 16.7% equity. And you're gonna find that you get to defend a whole lot more hands when you need to win 17% of the time compared to when you need to win 33% of the time. Let's take a look at another pre-flop example. Let's say everyone folds to the button who goes all in for eight big blinds, perhaps in the early stages of a tournament, they got shallow stacked. The small blind folds and you are now in the big blind. In this scenario, you should call with 45% of hands. These are all hands that are getting the proper pot odds to call against your opponent's all-in range, presuming your opponent's playing a good, strong game theory optimal strategy. If your opponent's going all-in tighter than the game theory optimal strategy, you should defend tighter. If they're going all in wider, you should defend wider. But as you see, for eight big blinds, if you're trying to play well against someone you do not know who you presume plays well, you should call with 45% of hands, all these hands in red right down here. But what happens if they are shallower stacked? Let's say they have five big blinds instead. Well, now you should call a lot wider, 77% of hands, because now you're getting much better pot odds. So as you see, the bet you're facing is smaller, and that lets you defend wider. And... If you're against a three big blind all in, you should actually call with any two cards, 100% of hands, because in that scenario, you have to put in two big blinds to try to win the roughly seven big blind pot. You need to realize two divided by seven, I don't even know what that is, not a lot. You need to realize about 30% equity and against a very wide all in range for three big blinds, any two cards will realize that much equity, which allows you to call incredibly wide. So before the flop pot odds matter, but what about after the flop, well, yes, they do. You're gonna find that as you're facing a smaller and smaller bet, you should defend wider and wider. We're gonna go through a post-flop example on the flop and then on the turn and then on the river to show how various bet sizes will impact your strategy. Let's say we're playing 40 big blinds deep, the button raises and the big blind calls. The flop comes, ace of spades, seven of hearts, six of diamonds. The big blind checks as they'll do with their entire range. And then let's presume the button is playing a good, strong game theory optimal strategy, which on this flop will involve betting very, very frequently. And let's presume in this scenario, they're betting the size of the pot. The game theory optimal strategy for the button will use mixed bet sizes. And typically their pot size bet will be with a stronger, more polarized range. And their smaller bet would be a uh, with a more linear medium strength range. That said, we're going to see how you should defend, assuming your opponent's playing well, 
and they bet pot. In this scenario, the big blind raises very infrequently, only 2% of the time with these hands in red, which on ace-7-6 is primarily going to be ace-10, ace-9, 7-6, and some draws. They are calling with 36% of hands and then folding 61% of hands. They're folding a ton because if you consider how all these hands that are in blue do on the ace-7-6 board, they don't do very well at all. King-10, not good. Jack-10, also not good. Jack-2, not good. So you see in this scenario, facing a big bet size on the flop, you're really just continuing with decent hands like pairs and draws. And if you don't have a pair or a draw, you're out of there. However, what happens if instead of betting the size of the pot, your opponent bets smaller? Let's say instead they now bet 25% pot. So instead of betting the size of the pot, now they're betting 25% pot. So if the pot was, let's say, $30, instead of betting $30, now they're betting about seven and a half dollars. Well, now you should be continuing much wider. And you'll find that when you're facing a smaller bet on the flop, you should be raising more often too. So now instead of raising only 2% of hands, just really good hands, now you're raising many more made hands for value, 18%. You're also calling a lot more, up to 42%, and you're only folding 39%. Let's take a look at some of the big differences here. Notice we are now raising something like ace eight offsuit and better straight up for value, right? We're also raising with a lot more straight draws like 10, nine, nine, eight, five, four, five, three, and four, three. We're also raising with a few more bluffs, primarily hands that have backdoor equity. That's going to be stuff like jack eight of diamonds. So we have the backdoor straight draw and the backdoor flush draw or nine, four of diamonds. 9-4 of hearts, 9-4 of spades, right? These are hands that have some backdoor equity. This is something a lot of people do very, very wrong. They would automatically fold the 9-4 or the jack-8 on this board, even against a tiny bet, thinking, oh, hand's not very good. But you have to realize, against this tiny bet, you must defend wide, otherwise your opponent's going to just completely run you over. Also, let's take a look at some of the hands that are calling. So now, remember uh, when we were facing the pot size bet, we pretty much just continued with pairs and draws. Now we are continuing with a lot of king highs and even queen highs, like queen nine of hearts, diamonds, or spades is going to call. All the queen jacks call. King queen and king jack call. Same thing with a lot of the other king highs, right? You're also calling with some pretty marginal hands, like um, queen four of the backdoor flush draw, right? Not a particularly great hand, but you have to stick around when you are getting very good odds. Now, on this particular ace high board, you are still going to fold a lot. Folding 39% to a tiny bet is a lot, but that's because hands like queen 10 offsuit have almost no potential here and you should get out of the way. Um, if the board was lower, you would actually defend wider because you have a lot of hands that are going to have roughly the 17% equity required to justify calling, or at least they're going to realize 17% equity. So if it was all low cards on the flop, you'd be calling with a whole lot of your random high card hands, especially if they have backdoor straight draws or flush draws, okay? So as we see, notice we're folding 39% against the 25% pot bet, whereas we were folding 61 against the pot size bet. That really is a substantial difference. Also, whenever you're facing a bigger bet on the flop, you raise way less often than when you're facing a smaller bet. Let's take this hand through the turn and then onto the river. Let's say the turn is the queen of clubs and both players check. All right, let's say the river is now the nine of clubs. All right, so ace, seven, six, queen, nine. Flush draws did not come in. Backdoor flush draws at least. On this nine of clubs river, let's say the big blind bets the size of the pot with, again, a GTO range that is going to be relatively polarized with good strong made hands and some bluffs. How should the button defend in this scenario? Well, the button's going to raise 12% of the time, primarily with very good made hands and uh, bluffs, call 36% of the time, and folds 52% of the time in this situation against this large bet. So let's take a look at what they are calling with on ace, seven, six, queen, nine. So notice the calls are hands like king, queen, which makes a whole lot of sense. An ace, if you have it, you may ask, where did all the aces go from the opponent's range? Well, they would have bet on the turn. Remember, the turn went check, check, right? So the button's going to not have very many ace x in their range because they would have continued betting a lot of those on the turn. Uh, when you check behind on the turn, usually your range is going to be somewhat marginal, protected with a few very strong nut hands. Okay, so they're also calling in the spot with a hand like pocket kings, right? 
They're calling with 10-9 for a rivered pair of nines. Notice a lot of the nines call, such as 9-8 as well. Notice some sevens are calling. Eight sevens calling, right? And then there are some raises getting in there. Why are we raising, you may ask? Well, if you have a really good hand in this spot, you certainly can raise, given you're only 40 big blinds deep. Notice 8-5 rivered the straight, as did 10-8, right? So these hands definitely want to raise. Queen-9 is very good as well. So if we have these very, very strong hands, we need to mix in some bluffs. What are good bluffing hands in this situation? Well, typically when you're bluffing, you want to have a card in your hand that makes it more difficult for your opponent to have a hand that will never, ever fold. So which hands will never, ever fold here? Well, straights, right? So you're going to find that in this spot, your bluffs are going to contain an eight. An eight is a very, very important card to have in this situation. So we see eight, seven bluffing as is eight, six. Same thing with 10-6. Um, that also blocks the 10-8, right? Same thing with 10-7. These are hands that could win at the showdown, but they block the straight, and for that reason, they are shoving. Also, the fact that they have a weak bottom pair is probably not good enough to call the pot size bet, but when you have 10-6 or 8-6, it makes it less likely that your opponent has pocket sixes or 7-6 or 9-6. It's going to automatically call the all-in. So all this is to show you here that... Facing this bet, we are still folding a decent amount of the time. We're just calling with something pretty good. And you're going to find that usually in No Limit Hold'em, when you're facing a pot size bet or bigger, you can fold unless you have something decent. Now, this is a actually rather unique spot because the buttons range doesn't contain very many ace X at all. So you are having to call with some pretty marginal pairs. Um, a lot of people would not call in this scenario the marginal pairs, but um, be aware that if we had more aces in our range for whatever reason, because we checked them back on the turn more often, then that will result in us not calling with so many of the weaker pairs in the spot. This is against the pot size bet though. What about if we're against a smaller bet? Let's say instead the opponent bet 25% pot with a usually much uh, thinner value range. So in this scenario, now because we're facing a smaller bet, we are going to raise far more often. Notice now we're raising 24% of the time instead of 12. So which hands are getting in there? and raising for value. Well, now we have the two pairs that are thrilled to raise, right? Also, we can get in there and raise with a hand like king-queen, even queen-eight, right? These are hands that are putting in a value raise, king-queen, queen-eight, and queen-nine, which I realize may seem pretty weak. These are hands are putting in a value raise in this scenario, assuming your opponent is playing good, strong game theory optimal poker. In this scenario, because the opponent's small betting range on the river should be generally very marginal. They would usually bet bigger with their ace X. Uh, that said, the really important thing here to take away is not necessarily the raising range, but look at the folding range. Only 22% of the time. Against this small 25% pot size bet, you're not folding a whole lot at all. In this situation, notice a lot of the king high is finding calls, right? Notice king queen, king jack. Is finding, I'm sorry, not King Queen, King Queen's good. Um, King Jack in this scenario is finding a call. Okay. Notice there are a few small pairs folding, but pretty much anything else is making the call in this situation, which is way up from this situation where we do see some pairs, or these a decent amount of pairs, letting it go, right? Like on the uh against the pot side bet, we see some even weak queens folding, and then certainly some sevens and sixes. Against the small bet, we're not folding any pair, pretty much, except for under pairs. So as you see in this scenario, as the bet size we are facing is smaller, we have to call much wider. What a lot of people do wrong is when they're facing a river bet, if they have something, they call. If they don't, they fold. But that's not how poker works. As you're facing a smaller and smaller bet, you need to call wider and wider. Now, you may say, what if my opponent bets small for value to try to sucker me in? Well, in that case, their range contains no bluffs. Obviously, if your opponent does something exploitative against you, such as never bluffing when they bet small, don't call because you're going to win 0% of the time with a lot of your junky bluff catchers. But again, if your opponent's trying to play good, strong GTO poker, you should respond with the GTO strategy, which is to call very, very wide. Alternatively, you'll find that some players bluff way too often whenever they use a small bet on the river just because they want to try to pick up the pot and they don't want to risk too much money. It's hard to know what a lot of people are doing. So if they do that strategy, well, now you should be calling much wider. And you should also be putting in raises with a lot of your hands that can't even beat the bluffs. 
because you can't really go around calling with you know, jack high or 10 high on the river all that often because even those hands do lose to some bluffs. So always consider if your opponent's not playing the game theory optimal strategy, but until you know a lot about your opponent's strategy, you should generally presume they play well or presume they play like the players in your particular player pool play in general, which may be too cautious on the river, meaning they are only value betting or value betting more often. Even then though, as you're facing a smaller bet, you need to be calling more often. So that's it for today. Pot size matters. The bet size you're facing impacts your strategy a ton. And long story short, very simply, against small bets, defend frequently, and against large bets, defend less often. Mm -hmm. Before you leave today, do me a favor, click the like and subscribe button down below. I appreciate mm -hmm. each and every one of you being here today. If you have any other questions about the fundamentals of poker, let me know down there in the comment section. I read every single comment and I want to make videos that help you fully understand poker so you can master the game. I'll talk to you next time.